welcome to our school that on Holy Thursday in our YouTube chapel, Ruma Karakia. We had prepared this liturgy for the last day of school, but then things changed. With the help of many people, we are now bringing this into your homes. We are celebrating a special liturgy of Tenebrae, a liturgy of shadows. Tenebrae, meaning shadows or darkness, has been practiced by the church since medieval times. Once a service for monks, it later became an important part of the worship of all Christians during Holy Week. Tenebrae is a meditative liturgy and a contemplation on Christ's suffering. A series of scripture readings trace the story of Christ's passion. The power of silence and darkness is momentous for this day. As lights and candles are extinguished, we invite you all to pause. Be still and contemplate the depths of Christ's suffering and death, to go with him and feel deeply the nature of his sacrifice. Let us now join Christians of many generations throughout the world in celebrating the Liturgy of Tenebrae, a Liturgy of Shadows today. Whakamoimiti me inoi tato, ki te ngā tamato o te tamaiti o te wairua tapu, āmene. Tenebrae means darkness or shadows. As we come to the end of Lent, we begin together a journey into darkness to a place of deep shadows. Today we accompany Jesus in his last hours. We will witness the suffering he endures. We listen to the words of condemnation and ridicule. In all this, he is innocent. He is the faithful servant of God, doing God's work, bringing the gospels of love, peace, and hope. And so, in this liturgy, we're invited to walk solemnly and attentively with Jesus. Better to know, better to understand, better to be his friend, his disciple, his witness. Be still and know that God is here. The light has come into the world, and the world loved the darkness rather than the light. God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. washes the disciples' feet. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean and you are clean though not all of you. 
for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right. For this is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly, I will tell you, servants are not greater than their masters, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. The Gospel of the Lord. reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus eats the Last Supper with his disciples. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed, and began to say to him, one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and, after giving thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. The word of the Lord. Loving God, on the night before Jesus died, he shared the Passover meal with his friends, giving them bread to nourish their spirits and wine poured out as his blood for the forgiveness of their sins. We pray that we may turn to him for our strength and for forgiveness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. 
So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. And Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. The Word of the Lord. mercy. Jesus prayed at the Garden of Gethsemane, seeking to understand what you were asking him to do. Help us to pray, to persevere in discovering the thing you call us to do with our lives. Give us the strength and courage to follow our calling, whatever the cost, when we feel alone or betrayed, afraid or helpless. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him, Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest teared up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourge, handed him over to be crucified. 
the word of the Lord. When we feel the whole world against us, accounting us of little worth, give us your spirit. May we speak the truth and stay firm in our calling to be like Jesus, whatever the cost. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus is crucified. The soldiers took him into their headquarters and called out the entire battalion. They dressed him in a purple, purple robe and made him a crown of long, sharp thorns and put it on his head. Then they saluted, yelling, Hail, King of the Jews! And they beat him on the head with a stick, spit on him, and dropped to their knees in mock worship. When they were finally tired of mocking him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him again. Then they led him away to be crucified. A man named Simon, who was from Cyrene, was coming in from the country just then, and they forced him to carry Jesus' cross. And they brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha. They offered him wine drop with mirror, but he refused it. Then, they nailed him to the cross. They gambled for his clothes, throwing dice to decide who would get them. It was nine o'clock in the morning when the crucifixion took place. A signboard was fastened to the cross above Jesus' head, announcing the charge against him. It read, The King of the Jews. Two criminals were crucified with him, their crosses on e either side of his, and the people passing by shouted abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. Ha! Look at you now! They yelled at him. You can destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, can you? Well then, save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests and teachers of religious law also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they scoff, but he can't save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of the Israel, come down from the cross so we can see it and believe him. Even the two criminals who were being crucified with Jesus ridiculed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father in heaven, we so often stand by as others are mocked or belittled, as cruelty and injustice are allowed free reign, afraid to speak, afraid to act, silent and guilty. Give us the strength to speak out and to witness always to the right and to the truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. From the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus dies on the cross. From noon on, Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. 
Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last breath. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. The word of the Lord. God of light and darkness, when we cannot find you and are not sure if you are there, give us faith. Let us understand that you are always faithful, always present, holding us and sustaining us, even in the darkest moments when all seems hopeless and lost and death surrounds us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. He was despised and we took no account of him. See, my servant will prosper. He shall be lifted up, exalted, rise to great heights. As the crowds were appalled on seeing him, so disfigured did, did he look that he, that he seemed no longer human. So will the crowds be astonished at him and kings stand speechless before him. For they shall see something never told and witness something never heard before. Who could believe what we have heard and whom has the power of the Lord been revealed? Like a sapling, he grew up in front of us, like a root in a rid of the ground. Without beauty, without majesty, we saw him. No looks to attract our eyes a thing despised and rejected by all people, a man of sorrow and familiar with suffering, a man to make people screen their faces. He was despised and we took no account of him, and yet ours were the sufferings he bore, ours the sorrows he carried. But we, we thought of him as someone punished, struck by God, and brought low. Yet he was pierced for our faults, crushed for our sins. On him lies punishment that brings us peace. And through his wounds we are healed. The word of the Lord. of rising. Today we look on Jesus, your son, stripped and humiliated, scourged and crowned with thorns, 
mocked and spat upon, betrayed and led out to be nailed to a tree. Yet this man takes upon himself our sins, our faults, our failings, and gives us new life through his resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus is laid in the tomb. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn into the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what the impostor said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go. Make it as secure as you can. So they went with a guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the tomb with a stone. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Kia ora. Holy Thursday is a really important, really important part of Holy Week. Because it's the night when Jesus celebrated the last meal with his apostles and that was really the first time that mass was celebrated but before that happened he washed the feet of his apostles when they first arrived and that is the servant leadership model that we talk about so much at our school when Jesus gets down to wash the feet of his apostles he gets down on the floor below them so that he has to look up to them and that important relationship in terms of looking up to someone it means that to look up to someone you stand under them and so you understand them and it means putting yourself below other people and showing respect for others so that's really important the other important part of holy thursday is after the meal when jesus goes into the garden of gethsemane and he prays and he's even though his apostles were with him, they all fell asleep. They didn't stay with him completely. So he felt really isolated and afraid and alone. Just like we are at present, isolated and afraid in, in this COVID crisis that we're currently in. But on Holy Thursday, I want you to look up at the sky and you'll see a full moon. And that moon is exactly the same moon that Jesus prayed under on Holy Thursday evening. 
So always think about that every Holy Thursday, that that is the moon that Jesus prayed under. And it makes us feel closer to Jesus and what he's about to go into. Best wishes.